Well, if it isn't Tiffany Bisconner. Tiffany, how are you? Welcome to my show. Hey, I'm doing good. Nice to see you. I'm doing good. I'm oh, doing good. <laughs> now you see why I love this girl? I haven't even introduced her yet. She's like, I'm doing good. And she's I'm not see, even I'm from New York. Like she's from California. I don't know how that... I don't know where that came from because I'm from New York. I'm doing good. I'm doing good too. So let me introduce Tiffany, who's doing good to my audience. Um, Tiffany was somebody I met uh, for coffee one day. We were introduced and it was instant love at first sight, um, instant chemistry. And it was chemistry really around the nature of what this show is about. Um, which is really about gas, give a shit. The one thing nobody can teach you in school, you can't, get, you can't get training in it, you can't get certified in it, you can't read a book on it. Everybody has a certain level of gas baked in them and this woman, folks, we're talking about holy shit. This is a no bullshit girl. Um, no offense to people from California, but I think in her past life, she's from New York um, because she's straight up and real and has no problem telling you what she really thinks. Um, which, hey, I mean, come on, that's, that, that is perfect for me. So um, Tiffany uh, is someone who has kind of had a live to go for it life. Um, she is a creative person who now plays with numbers. Um, and most people would say, huh? What do you mean a creative person that is now a numbers person? Let me explain a little bit. So this was a musician. This was a, a singer, songwriter in a punk rock band. Yes, folks, a punk rock band. I should talk. I was in a progressive rock band a hundred years ago. I'm a little older than, than she is. And um, I guess she decided to try and make some money in her life. <laughs> or more money, or more money, or she burnt out, or a whole host of other reasons. Um, and um, I have to tell you all that uh, she's the perfect guest to be on the show. And we're going to dig into this gas thing, because this is a woman who, who really has it, folks. So um, Tiffany now is with a company that does... Um, and, and you can slap me around, Tiffany, if I screw anything up, because I know you will anyway. Um, she, it's a company that provides a free service um, to look for R&D tax credits for businesses. Um, they're, the predominance of their clientele are high asset clients like uh, manufacturers, but they have clients across the board. Um, and basically what they do is they find their clients found money. And how they make money is, of course, they take a percentage of that um, because there's no fee. So, I mean, to me, it's like a duh, you know, bit value proposition. Uh, you wonder why she does well uh, in getting clients, never mind that killer freaking smile um, and, uh, and her personality. And, um, but first, Tiffany, Thank you for being here. I know you said you're doing good. I'm doing good. Let me ask you a question, dear. And thanks for letting me rant. I warned you I was gonna, I was gonna spew about you. So thank you. Um, where do you think this gas in you comes from? Why do you give a shit so much? That is such an amazing question. And you are adorable. And thank you so much for the intro. And I had to bite my tongue because I promised to. So <laughs> there are plenty of interjection points. I had, her, I had her sign on the bottom line, folks. I said, look, I'm going to spew about you. You've got to shut up. <laughs> I think good. Thank you. Treats later. Um, <laughs> no, I think um, for me, it's something I think about often because I also feel like that has been my driving force in life from as far as I can remember. I've never looked at myself as separate from the world around me. And whether I'm talking about nature or other people or just the overall society I was born into, I think growing up in San Francisco, as much as we can do the East Coast, West Coast battle, um, growing up in, you know, in an area that was very progressive and looked at humans as, as the humanity as a whole is something important to protect and to look out for. 
I've never segregated my actions from the impact that can have on the world around me. So for me, I've always looked for ways to be the most authentic person I could be, to utilize my strengths, to understand what I had to offer, to fortify that as I go through my life through consistent learning and constantly trying to ask questions of the world around me, of the paradigms around me, of the things inside of me to ask you know, at least five, six, seven, ten levels of depth of why does this exist and is this the right thing to do or is this not? Does this resonate or does this not? And then consistently change my path in a way that that I felt like I could believe in. And for me, that always comes back to am I being the best person I can be? And am I helping other people do the same, basically? Holy shit, Tiffany. I should have I should have known if I asked you that question, you're gonna hit me right between the eyes. That <laughs> you packed a whole bunch of amazing stuff in what you just said. Um, alignment, living your life in alignment and a more holistic view of people, uh, living with purpose, um, understanding consequences. Um, wow, okay. But the one thing I don't think you answered well enough, and <laughs> I'm gonna keep digging is, I understand that's your worldview, which is freaking beautiful. I love, I mean, you're a deep thinker. I know that. And I know that you, you seek alignment in your life, not only in what you do, but how you live it and people and the whole thing. And you work on that. But you didn't really answer where it really came from other than just growing up in San Francisco. Can, can, can we... Can we dig into that a little more? I mean, what is it about San Francisco then? I mean, I, like, that's the only, like, solid answer I got was that I grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> so you're picking on me already. Of course that? I am. <laughs> you agree to this. Yeah. I totally you did it. To I, I, it. I signed up. And, no, no, <laughs> totally. and if you can't tell, this is why we resonated initially. Continue, you know, because it is, it is those same roots, but... Yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, I think a lot. <laughs> I feel a lot. Um, I don't necessarily blame it on San Francisco because I obviously feel that there's internal factors that, that, we're, that are inherent in the way that we see things and kind of navigate through. Um, I think, obviously, my immediate family uh, had a lot to do with the things both that I felt didn't work and 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 guiding my anarchist and uh, nonconformist personality in the sense of not wanting just to sign up for something because that's what you were supposed to do. Not How did you become so philosophical though? You're, you're, very, <laughs> you're a very deep thinking, much more introspective person than your average number pusher. Um, I'm sorry to call you a number pusher, but um, you know, I think you they are. push me more than I push them. <laughs> well, there is I mean, a little tug of war. I find that most number pushers, and I don't like to generalize, aren't the most colorful living people. They're some of my best friends. I mean, please, that doesn't diminish who they are. It's just that they're not very creative and colorful type of people. You are a very creative, colorful, introspective, philosophical human. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think you call yourself out as much as you call others out, you know? And I love, I love that about you, right? Because I'm calling, my, my, I'm calling me and my shit all the time, you know? Yeah. So, so I think it's just the very nature of who you are. But you also mentioned that, you know, it also came from your upbringing as well, which is a very common answer I get when I ask that question. Um, but it was also, I think your first response was your environment, the environment that in which you were raised and then grew up in in San Francisco was, um, you know, San Francisco is a very liberal city. Um, you become more, uh, first of all, it's very cultural. Um, so you have to be more open-minded to different ideas and different cultures and different thought processes and different values. And you have to learn to either respect them or you're probably not gonna to do too well in San Francisco. I mean, you're not gonna be the happiest person, right? So you were kind of forced in a, in a way to adapt to a life that you thought was best lived. So what, 
made you go down the, so you first went down the path, you went to college, right? I did quite a few times. <laughs> so, so yeah. explain what you mean by that answer. <laughs> So, you know, constant quest, lifelong learning, the, you know, something that's important to me. So my initial, when I did my undergrad, it was at Mills College in Oakland, which was a nice little bubble, all women's private school. I, I focused on uh, an anthropology and theater arts. So, yeah, so I was a big theater brat. That was one of my first loves. I did a lot of dance curriculum while I was there, um, also taught dance and ran a dance production company and um, toured wow. internationally for about... 10 years doing that as well. Um, but for me, it was the arts that always drove me and spoke to me because that was both a way to externalize my internal environment and try to understand what all of these colors were inside of me that I had no words for or paints for, right? And then on the other side, a way to communicate and to, to interact with people around you in a deeper way. So even through theater, I mean, a lot of the theater I did was, was geared towards um, you know, social change or geared towards activism. A lot of the dance I did, of course, was was using your whole body as a canvas and trying to understand how to express all these things that I felt, and again, had no words for. So for me, my drive was always the arts and always expression and always finding ways to dig deeper. And so my initial education was based around that just because that was my passion, that's what made sense. Um, and then I got a master's in psychology and then I got a master's in uh, financial management and accounting. So I just kept going down this path of, you know, basically debt. But <laughs> so, folks, so folks, you wonder why we're like in love with each other. Um, friendship. She has a special person in her life, but it's like total, like we get each other is Okay, so if you, for those that know me, I'm a former chief science officer, two graduate degrees as well, university adjunct professor, who was singer songwriter in a progressive rock band, who worked for, at a point in his life, the world's largest collector of original antique posters, original treks, traveled the world. You know, she had her way of figuring out mind, body, and spirit and how to fit herself into this world. I had my path of mind, body, and spirit and how I would fit myself in this world. And it's so funny because we both have ended up, her on the financial end and me more on the business development and um, coaching end uh, and business ownership end. Um, and uh, we just found ways to constantly reinvent ourselves. And I think, um, for those that are listening, this is, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. It's never too late to change your mind. I mean, think about her background and now what you're doing, where you're actually, I mean, what you do has to be so rewarding in that. Well, let me ask you, what do you love most about what you're doing now? Uh, I think what I love and to kind of add on how you're explaining it, right? I don't, I don't necessarily feel like it's a reinvention when you do things like this. What I feel is you're collecting pieces of yourself along the way and finding new ways to, to capitalize on the gifts that you have. And for me, I feel like what I enjoy most about what I'm doing now is through a lifelong of feeling a bifurcation between my creativity and my analytical side of my brain, finally getting to the point where I just say F it and I'm going to put these two things together in whatever way I can. And this is going to be who I am because this is who I am. So it is not one or the other. So at this point, being able to embrace harness and kind of pick up the best parts of myself and dive into a venture together with all of these parts of me and all of the experience that I've had and to be able to see the impact of that on other people's lives, on their businesses, on their trajectory forward, and to be able to really feel like I can both feel the value and quantify the value is very, very rewarding because I can see what that means to someone else's life. You know, I knew I had to wear track shoes <laughs> when I was going to do this with you because I, I, I knew I had to freaking bring it because this is not my typical guest. Oh, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, and, you know, I like to, you know, I like to jog and I like to go out to dinner and no, this is, you know, you, 
this is a powerful vibrating human folks and 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 she lives her life with gas her whole life is about gas giving a shit and 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 making sure that how you live your life matters um and that it's in alignment so how long now i know that after the dancing you went into music and and then you 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 toured with that how long ago uh did you start uh doing what you're doing now so i have been so when i even when i danced i ran the business side of the dance company so it was always both but kind of segregated and piled on top of each other so i had started in the financial space uh, when i was honestly when i was 15 and um, managing cafes, managing uh, box offices um, for the theater. So I always did both. I always had both of those parts, except what I wanted to do was the artistic side. And then what I learned is there's no, there's without having the support of a business foundation, you can't actually move forward with your dreams to create or erect a business. And what I notice now is diving into the startup space, diving in with entrepreneurs, understanding that the dream exists, but the foundation needs to be there to support it. Um, So for me, I totally lost the question you asked me. (laughs) So the question was, when did you start? Oh, putting it together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so I would say, yeah, when I was was 15 is when I started in the financial space. And as a controller CFO, I started uh, working in the private industry sector. Um, She just over 20 years. You know, what's so funny, (laughs) what's so funny, okay, so her answer, folks, is this. It wasn't this, then this, then this. Yeah. She was kind of doing it all at the same time, which is really my story. You know, mm-hmm. while I was playing in shitholes in New York, I was an adjunct professor at a university in New York. I was a chief science officer in New York, right? I was the chairman of the board of a, not, uh, a, a, a resource conservation not for profit organization. So I was doing the, the, all those things at the same time, like her. A lot of people don't do it that way, Tiffany. They don't. A lot of people like, okay, I'm going to take a, a turn and now I'm going to take another turn. And that's why you don't consider it a, re- a, a reinvention, which I loved how you explained that. So, um, so now the company you're with, you're doing this work, you're providing, you're digging into the financials of these companies to find, um, to help them find this found money. Um, and I just found out folks that even with everything going on with, uh, coronavirus, um, they're busy. I mean, and why not? Right. There's no cost to find out, uh, if you're, uh, if they can find out if you have, uh, available tax credits. Um, so they're still busy, which is wonderful. Um, it's different, I'm sure, how you're getting clients and how you're doing business. It's different for everybody. But the fact that you're busy is wonderful. So um, what is a good, give me a good profile. If somebody's listening to the show and they own a business or they consult to a business or they could refer you a client, what is a perfect kind of situation to refer to you? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think... Uh... Also to go back quickly to your other question, what is awesome about this space if you're talking about innovation and R&D, right? Creativity and technical expertise are necessities. So when I look at um, prospects for the R&D tax credit specifically, it's a business that is focusing on developing new or improved products or processes, invention software. So if you take that as kind of like an overarching umbrella, I mean, we're looking at manufacturing, contract manufacturing companies, engineering companies, software is huge, uh, SaaS-based businesses, anybody internally trying to figure out a new way to do something for their organization that results in utilizing some kind of technical expertise uh, through the hard sciences. So, so um, and, and I know you're going to answer the second part, but before you do, uh, remember this. Um, I don't know how I'd never made two and two in my head i've got a lot more introductions for you (laughs) Um, because i i don't know it just was like oh okay i can help her with that too so so okay so contract manufacturers tech firms firms that are putting in new software into their companies firms that are 
putting that software into those new companies. Um, those are all good people for her to know. So how would somebody um, get in? Is there, could they go to your website and is there like a way they can uh, put in their information or do they just get in touch with you? Um, either. Yep. Our website, we have contact information. Um, I try to stay pretty active on LinkedIn. So if anybody wants to look me up there, um, I can message you there. Call me. So, me. so give us the information so we know how to do that, please. Okay. Well, I haven't met another Tiffany Visconner, which is great. So I'm easy to Google search, unfortunately. Um, but in LinkedIn, just my full name, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y-B-I-S-C-O-N-E-R. And then my email is my first and last name, Tiffany period Visconner at athenaconsulting.com and that's a-t-e-n-a -E consulting c-o-n-s-u-l-t-i-n-g.com and um yeah so feel free so to again it's tiffany bisconer folks b-i-s-c-o-n-e-r uh she literally is a rock star <laughs> not quite not How just figuratively because i was just say you're a rock star girl but she actually really is. So <laughs> we, we, we need to get done with the interview so we can go back to our jam session that we were doing before the interview. So, uh, <laughs> Tiffany, you're the bomb. I oh, love you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, you, um, you give great interview. Um, and thank you so much. Have an amazing day. And um, I'm sure we'll cross paths again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.